I've been playing a lot of MMOs in 2024. I played a lot of MMOs in 2023, recording footage for new games, upcoming games, old games. And it got me thinking, last year I did an MMORPG tier list video. There were quite a few people that disagreed with my overall rankings, but they gave their input. It was a very fun discussion to have. I wanted to start off this year with a brand new tier list because I have been playing so many games and my outlook on several of them has changed. I don't really think we need more of an introduction than that. We have over 70 games to rank, so let's just jump right in. Now this will be as condensed and concise as I possibly can be. Let's start this off with four story, tab target, not a very fun game, a lot of restrictions. They actually copyright struck my last video because I used the background music in it. I would put this probably in the E category. Next is Age of Conan. This is a game I actually had a lot of fun in, but uh, after like the first few hours, there's really not much to do in the game. I'd probably put this in the D category, maybe higher if the action combat made more of an impact in the later game. Ion, I'm going to put in the F category because I grinded it for probably like 60 hours and it was autoplay, repeating the same quests and content. This is an abomination of a game. I have no idea how they managed to ruin it to the extent that they did. Albion Online, I would put in the A tier. Very good quality game. I haven't put enough hours into it. Sandbox world, lots of emphasis on freedom. Allods Online, I put in almost 40 hours recently. I, I didn't play the premium server, I played the free server, which was really boring. The tab target combat was slow. There was just no real way to progress. Put this in the E category. Arcage right now with all the merges, I think they merged Arcage and Arcage Unchained together, is a definite F category MMO. I hope they improve with Arcage 2, especially given Arcage has some of the best tab target combat in the genre, but I mean like at present that is kinda it. Atlantica Online, I'll put in the E category because it's a dead game, not really anything to do, but does have a very interesting strategy style of combat. But I mean, at least it's not as bad as Ion or Arcage right now. Aura Kingdom E category, pretty game, but very linear. Tab target combat's not very fun. Black Desert Online, incredible combat, incredible graphics, fantastic world. They're continuing to improve the game. They constantly introduce new classes. Everything about this game just always feels updated, full of life. They have a clear direction that they're going with it. And I like this is an easy SS category. Blade and Soul is a probably an E category MMO. Fantastic combat, beautiful graphics, decent story, but ruined by everything else. The constant removal of everything, the egregious pay to win, the focus on Blade and Soul Neo Classic now. Horrible game in its current form. Bless Unleashed is I think is an NFT game now. Yeah, it was not a horrible game. I probably would have put this in the C category before, but now it's an immediate F category game. Champions Online is a D category game. Decent tab target combat, a lot of customization, decent world to explore. Closers Online, E category, dead game, pretty much no updates, no player base, fun. Horizontal side scrolling combat system and world. DC Universe Online. I've always ranked DC Universe Online above Champions Online because I really I, I, I like the story present in DC Universe, plus it has a lot of the characters, the heroes, and the villains that I like. Decaron, oh man, this is an old one. This is a very old, very pay to win, very slow tab target MMO. This is probably a, an E category game. Dragon Nest is a, I think even now, is probably a C list game because Still has very good combat, still has a lot of things to do. There's a semi-active community, which is very weird given a game like Dragon Nest, like 15 years later, maintains a semblance of community, but other games that were released less than a decade ago don't end up shut down. Dragon Nest 2 is an autoplay pay to win bullshit mobile game that is an immediate F, probably one of the worst games in this list, but not the worst. Dungeon Fighter Online, I feel is an A tier game. It's a hub MMO, fantastic action combat, very beautiful, like sprite graphical style. It looks really good and plays very well. Dungeons and Dragons Online is probably a C tier game. 
I feel like it has the potential to be a lot of fun, but there's just no one to play the game with. Eden Eternal is a D tier game, especially with what has been done with it recently. Good graphical style, decent combat system, fun world to explore. El Sword, I feel like is, is a better game than Eden Eternal. It's also kind of a horizontal side scroller for the most part. A lot better action, combat system, better graphics overall. EVE Online, like, I'm gonna place that in the D category just because I was never smart or patient enough to really learn the game. I know everyone else that actually plays it loves it and I love the complexity and I love the freedom that the game gives you. EverQuest is a C tier quality game. I know I'm gonna upset some people with this one. Sticks, how could you rate EverQuest C category? What is wrong with you? <laughs> It's just, I didn't grow up with it, and presently, it feels kind of old. <laughs> I would rank EverQuest 2 pretty much the same, and I can already see the Hive Leader now. Like, I can't believe I'm friends with that guy. <laughs> Fiesta Online E-Category game, not at all fun. Probably one of the worst anime MMOs in this entire list. Florenta Online, never mind, Florenta Online is an F-quality game, it's worse than Fiesta Online, especially because of the the mass increase in difficulty that kind of just ramps up incredibly fast. And with no one around to help you, like there's no way to overcome the difficulty. Flife, I would rate, especially with Flife Universe, a C tier anime MMO because it, it's still very fun, very nostalgic, packed with players, lots to do. Granado Espada is an E category MMO. It is also kind of like a tactical, kind of like a strategy MMO, absolutely gorgeous, like French setting. No other game replicated what Granado Espado did. Grand Fantasia, I would rank roughly equivalent to Eden Eternal. Very similar game, but that's because it's done by the same developer. I think it was like X Legend or X Seed, one of the two. Now Guild Wars 2, before I would have rated an S category MMO. But with the two recent expansions and the increase in content cadence, I feel like Guild Wars 2 has upgraded to an SS tier MMO. They've spent like five years with little in the way of new content outside of like singular episodes that weren't the quality, the size or scale of an expansion. But now that they've released two expansions in the span of like two or three years, I feel like players are much happier and the game is much healthier. Critica is, in its current form, an F-tier MMO, MMO. It has been rebooted four times, five times by now, one of which was, I think, an NFT game. Like, if you can't succeed the first time, or the second time, or the third time, or the fourth time, the fifth time is probably not gonna work either. Lineage 2 was a very fun game in the past, but is not necessarily the best game anymore. I know a lot of you understand what I mean. Very fun game, very difficult game, very complex game, but also semi pay to win game, but still better than a lot of its competition. Lord of the Rings Online, I would probably place in the C category. I'd place it in B if I found it to be more fun, but it just felt so slow. And that kind of, I don't know, that lack of speed just kind of, left me feeling a little bored sometimes. Lost Ark is a definite, I feel like it falls between A and B, but I'm gonna place it in A tier because I love the combat, I love the graphical style, I love the story present. Even if Amazon did gut it to an extent, Maba Nogi, I would also put in the A tier because it is by far the most unique MMO pretty much ever. It's a social MMO. You can get a job, you can age up from a child to an adult rebirth has an interesting combat system, interesting world. There's such complexity and depth to this game that most players will never truly even understand or comprehend. Maple Story is also an A-tier quality MMO. Very fun, very humorous storyline, fantastic graphics, very large world, always tons of things to do. Mirror 4, F-tier quality. Man, I should have put a G-tier quality because that's where this game would have been. Absolutely horrible, pay to win, play to earn as well auto like th there's everything that is wrong with mobile mmos is present in this pc game moonlight blade online f tier quality game that's exactly the same as mirror 4 except you can't play to earn and additionally 
Moon Knight Blade M utilizes AI voice acting, which was really freaking bad. Neverwinter is a B tier quality game. Great combat, good graphics, fun world. Little too pay to win for me. Decent population too. I feel like this is almost an A tier quality game, but there's just something about it that kind of holds it back. New World is an A tier quality game. It has improved exponentially since the last time I played it. I've been delving into it a little bit recently so I could do a dedicated video on it in 2024 and I am overall more impressed with it than I thought I was going to be. Path of Exile, I know what you guys are thinking. Sticks, Path of Exile isn't an MMO. But last, last year when I did my tier list video, people were like, Sticks, how come you didn't include Path of Exile in your video? Path of Exile is clearly an MMO. So I thought, you know what? For those of you that don't think it's an MMO, just completely disregard this. For those of you that do think it's an MMO, it is clearly an SS tier quality game. Easy. Perfect World, E quality game. I played it for probably 20 hours in the last few months. And oh my God, did they gut this game. It was already horrible and pay to win. But like, it is so much worse. Still not as bad as the games down in the F tier category though. Perfect New World is just as bad. No, it is actually worse than Perfect World. I, my wife, Mrs. Six and I played like, 40 50 hours of the beta oh my god was it a freaking nightmare pso2 very fun game i would definitely put this in the b category beautiful anime game lot very very fun combat fun world to explore it is a hub mmo great story it's a very long story lots to do pso2 new genesis is like a much shorter but also better looking and better playing game then PSO2, I feel like it's also in the same category. We're still slowly catching up to a point where there's enough content to do though. Ragnarok Online in its current form is a D tier category MMO. I put in a dozen or so hours in the last few months and it's just like, I don't know, it, it's really boring. I, I can't put my finger on why that is. I don't remember it being as boring as it is and as dead as it is. Revelation Online is an E tier MMO. Not an F, an E tier. No, you know what? It's an F tier because once you make it to like level 40, you can't do anything by yourself. And unfortunately, there is literally no one that plays the game. Revelation M is equally as bad. This is like Moonlight Blade and Moonlight Blade M. But Revelation M is an autoplay game, much like Moonlight Blade M, but, and also utilizes AI voice acting, but it's even worse than Moonlight Blade M because Revelation M shifts between like several different AI voices for the same character. It is horrible. And I have a video coming on that showcasing it in detail soon. Riders of Icarus is I think an NFT game now. It's actually horseshit. Rift is, I feel like Rift has always been the same game. Like literally it hasn't gotten any better or worse in like the last freaking decade. RuneScape has always been a fun but very slow game uh, and i know i'm gonna upset like callum and josh and a few other content creators by putting this here but i just never like it has always been fun but i just never really enjoyed it as much as some others but that's okay because there are different kinds of gamers out there with different likes and dislikes and that is that is good. Secret World Legends is an S tier quality game. I don't care what anyone says. The Secret World was an SS tier quality game, but the newer version, Secret World Legends, is an S tier quality game. One of the best stories you'll ever encounter in an MMO. Decent combat, decent graphics, decent world. Everything about this game is a lot of fun. There's just no one left that plays it, and that's very sad. Silk Road Online, oh my God, like one of the most pay to win MMOs to have ever existed. In its current form, I. I I tried it out recently and there's like no one that plays it. It's so slow. I don't know. It feels horrible now. Skyforge is an E tier category, much like Silk Road Online. I played Skyforge absolutely dead. Fantastic combat, really good graphics. But I mean, outside of that, it is just so gated and single player. And the, the single player isn't even fun. Soul Worker, I played with Mrs. Sticks recently and we actually did a video on it just last month. I'd probably put this in the D category. I used to have it in like A or S, but it has fallen quite significantly for me, especially with the catch up mechanics, how they kind of just like throw you into end game and give you like legendary gear and you're just expected to know how your character plays and what everything is and does. Star Trek Online, 
I would put in the C-list category. It was fun when I played it. There was a lot to it though, and I think it was kind of overwhelming as a game. Star Wars The Old Republic, definitely an S-tier quality game. This is Sticks and I, again, recently started playing this because this is one of her favorite MMOs of all time. Great story, fun world, lots of content. I've always hated the combat though. I really do. Like, if I were basing this off of combat, this would be like an E-tier quality game, but I'm not. I'm basing it off of a number of different things. Tales of Pirates, I played a private server of recently because this used to be my favorite MMO. I played this game for two years and it's still the same as it has always been, which, you know, now that I've played so many different MMOs is probably a D-list game. The Elder Scrolls Online, I think I put in like A or S tier last time and I have played dozens of hours of it recently because of the Necrom expansion. And you know what? It, it's still an S tier quality game. <laughs> I've always hated the combat, the, the animation canceling and everything in this game, and that really continues to inhibit how much I can potentially enjoy it. Tower of Fantasy, I feel like, was always a decent quality game, and 3.0 and subsequent 3.x patches have continued to, for the most part, improve the game. From what I've heard, 3.6 did horribly for players, and everyone seemed to have hated it, but I still feel in terms of anime MMOs, it is one of the best out there. I also feel in terms of action combat, it is one of the better ones out there for an anime MMO. I feel like in terms of the world and how beautiful it is, it is one of the best ones out there. I feel like the story continues to be kind of bad. The character models, very appealing. I think at the end of the day, regardless of Tower of Fantasy's faults, this is still a very fun game to play. Now I give Tower of Fantasy shit from time to time, like at least once a month, because I mean, they do dumb shit every month, but that's because I, I enjoyed the game every time I played it and I don't want the game to fail. I never have. And seeing that potential remain untapped is disappointing for me. Tree of Savior, I played recently and it's kind of always just been like a C or D tier quality game. The community is very friendly, the graphics are beautiful, and the combat is very fun. Vindictus, I feel like, is roughly the same. Beautiful game, great combat. Love the world and environmental interactions that are available in it. Warframe is much the same as Path of Exile. I also got people saying, Hey Styx, why wasn't Warframe in your list? It is now. If you don't think it's an MMO, absolutely no problem, just disregard this. But if you do, then you'll like to know that I feel like it's an SS category MMO. Waven is an MMO I played recently that was actually a very fun strategy game, anime aesthetic. I'd probably put this in the C list category, maybe a B list, but I don't like the fact that they kind of promote like a sense of solo play as much as they do. Wizard 101, I've never really enjoyed. It just, I don't understand why people like it as much as they do. I realized for whatever reason, the Final Fantasy 14 image didn't upload. So I guess the last two entries, Final Fantasy 14. I've been playing Final Fantasy 14 for, I think like nine years now. And I think Stormblood was one point that I felt like canceling my subscription, but I didn't because Shadowbringers was going to come after it. And Shadowbringers looked so incredible. And it was. And I let my subscription stay for both Stormblood and Shadowbringers. And then Endwalker came and gave me the same feeling I had with Stormblood. I was disappointed. I might be the only one that didn't like Endwalker. Not that it was a bad expansion. I just don't think it was of the same caliber as Heavensward or as Shadowbringers. But that being said, I still feel like Final Fantasy XIV is an SS tier quality MMO. I also feel like World of Warcraft is too. Because World of Warcraft continues to be, especially after Dragonflight being as good as it was, one of, if not my favorite MMO. And that is my tier list of roughly 70 MMOs that I have played over the course of the last year. I don't know what your games, your, your list consists of. You're more than welcome to let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear what your top favorite and least favorite MMOs are respectively, but this is my list of the best and the worst MMORPGs currently available in 2024. Again, I know that there are some that I missed, but that's just because I haven't played them. I cannot give any input on them. Now, if you're interested in MMOs coming this month or just looking for something else to watch, go ahead and check out one of these two videos on screen right now.